Kyle Farmer is the opening day shortstop by default. The Reds continue to add to the roster, and we go around the horn for three up and three down. That's on today's Locked on Reds. Let's go. You are Locked on Reds, your daily Cincinnati Reds podcast, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are Locked On Reds with myself, Jeff Carr, and my co-host, Stephen Offenbaker. We have podcasted about this Reds team for over three years and remain quite addicted to Reds baseball. Locked On Reds is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making us your first listen. We are free and available on all down on all podcast platforms, <laughs> including YouTube. On today's podcast, injuries are already messing up the Reds' plans, and one specific player looks to lose important ground in a position battle. Who will step up in their absence? Also, we do a quick a quick three up and three down about the rest of the weekend, including a position battle that may already be wrapped up. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. And where we start, Steve, is with the injury news of this weekend that was so disheartening. And I think that really wins and losses when it comes to spring training don't mean a hill of beans. They're about as useful as an umbrella in a windstorm. But the biggest news you can probably have is either a transaction where you add a player or an injury. The Reds got two bad news injuries this weekend. Yeah, let's start right with uh, what I consider to be just a, a, a blow to what we've been talking about all offseason. And that is, of course, the injury to Jose Barrero. He is going to be out at least six weeks uh, with an injury to his left hand. It's the hemet bone, which is, you know, basically in his glove hand, just pretty much right near the edge of where the glove ends and the hand begins. Uh we haven't heard confirmation exactly how this happens, but I'm going to just suspect that it has something to do with uh, taking some infield and, and catching a bad hop. That's generally how this injury occurs. So uh, for me, this is huge. Uh, what it means is that Kyle Farmer, who we have been talking all season long, should be a super utility on this team, uh, is now going to, by default, pretty much retain his role as the starting shortstop and as the opening day shortstop for the Reds, at least in the near term, uh, as this season gets underway in just a couple weeks. Yeah, and he's been playing all right in his first couple of spring training games, has Kyle Farmer. I, I look at this and I say, you know, this just weakens the Reds because Jose Barrero absolutely needed the lion's share of the playing time at shortstop. Six weeks is probably where you start with this. Um, I'm hoping that this is something that heals easily, but like you said, I mean, it's right there. That is exactly where you're going to get the ball. I mean, you know, maybe a little bit lower if you hit it right there is probably where you're looking for it. But you're going to feel it every time the ball hits. So there is no, okay, he's, you know, 60, 70%. He can go because then you're going to run the risk of him getting the ball right there and either re-injuring it or at the very least just not being able to catch it because it hurts more than he's able to really put the concentration into closing the glove on it. So I, I look at this and I say this is really unfortunate because he is the shortstop of the future. Yes, he's been the store shortstop of the future for the last couple of years, but I think there's an interesting conversation to be had given that there are so many shortstops coming up the pipeline. Now, I don't think that any of them are imminent as far as their call-ups are concerned, not on opening day at least. But as the season drones on, if, if Jose Barrero cannot get healthy, the shortstop of the future title may be lifted off of him and put on somebody else. And we might have to figure out yet another top prospect that was on this Reds list as to where exactly they fit into the Reds' future plans. And, you know, I think even a larger part of this picture, Jeff, than just Jose Barrero being healthy is the at-bats that he's missing. Uh, we have not questioned at all his defensive ability, uh, and we have not questioned at all that he is a defensive upgrade for this team. The question is, can he hit? Can he hit at the major league level? Now, he shredded the minor leagues last year, but was given minimal opportunity to put it together at the big league level. These at-bats that he's missing now were the at-bats that were going to help turn some head and change some minds. 
And now that he's missing out on those, you know, I think that, you know, the biggest, uh, the biggest benefit in this whole situation goes to Kyle Farmer because uh, I believe truly that Barrera was going to press him for that job. And uh, that whole thing could be derailed now. You know, once you know how it is with playing the hot hand, if Kyle Farmer gets in there and plays an average shortstop, you know, we may be looking at uh, left fielder Jose Barrero for a majority of this season. Yeah. And I, I also think about Farmer. I look, he's, he's fine. We, we've said that all offseason. He is a fine player if you ask him to fill in in any position. He is going to be just all right. I still see a little bit of the plate discipline stuff even early on in spring training, which, I mean, hitters usually take a minute to ramp up uh, and, and catch up to where the pitchers are in spring training. But still, that was something that he had all last season. He's kind of a wild swinger when it comes to things like that. I I wonder, though, um, I, I really want to see Jose Barrero back as quickly as possible because I think that's the best version of the Reds is him starting at shortstop. There was one other big injury piece of news, and this is from fr- or this is for friend of the podcast, Lucas Sims. He, uh, his elbow injury that was reported whenever players were reporting to camp uh, that it was kind of disputed by him and his wife and, and things like that. But I guess the whole purpose of Nick Kroll bringing that up in the first place was he wasn't able to ramp up his conditioning like other guys have. And so he's going to be a little bit behind everybody else. I don't look at this and say this is a long-term thing, but you know, for a week or maybe 10 days into the season, the bullpen's going to be a little bit disorganized. You know, it's really interesting. This is the second year in a row that the Reds front office has talked about Lucas coming to camp injured. And it's the second year in a row that we've seen reports from his wife, Danny, telling everybody, now, wait a minute, that's not exactly right. And then ultimately what we end up with is a healthy Lucas Sims that's a little bit delayed. Uh, I think that if this were a regular spring training, we wouldn't even be talking about this. This is just the type of thing where he could have caught up, but there's just not enough time because of the owners and their lockout. So uh, Lucas Sims is going to be a little bit delayed. He's probably not going to be active for the first couple weeks of the season. Uh, Ultimately, this is not a big deal. We're just going to need another pitcher or two to step up uh, in that short interim between the season starting and Lucas being ready to assume the role as the ace of the bullpen. Yes, the ace of the bullpen, which, by the way, he used that term on Red's Hot Stove League 100%. Thanks. Lucas, thanks, thanks for, for listening, listening, Lucas. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I, I'm with you. The bigger of these two news stories is absolutely Jose Barrero, especially because it's a little bit bigger of an injury. And, and the bullpen, I think, at least in the short term, it's very obvious that Luis Sessa will step nicely into his spot, into Sims's ace of the bullpen spot. I just wonder what the rest of the bullpen is going to do because you move everybody up a rung, and this was already a thin bullpen. Injuries are going to be the biggest factor. I, I think that you can kind of squint and see a league average bullpen if you squint really hard, but that's if everybody's healthy, and you got to squint really hard at that too. So when you start putting people on the injured list, then you're going to be asking other people like some non-roster invitees who we're going to talk about later who are not impressing so far in the spring training games that we're going to be like, all right, you're going to have to pitch some innings for this. And that's going to be interesting to see, but we'll talk about who's next man up uh, next coming up here in just a moment. Well, if you want to know who is the next man up at shortstop, don't bet on Jose Barrero. Uh, But if you do want to know who to bet on, head on over to betonline.net. BetOnline.net has you covered this season with more props, more odds, and more lines than ever before. BetOnline.net remains the best spot for all of your sports scores and news this coming season. BetOnline has up-to-the-minute info on pro and college hoops. March Madness is still underway right now. Head over there to learn all about it. They've also got the NHL. They've got boxing. They've got UFC. And they have Major League Baseball. That's right, Major League Baseball. Real-time updates on the games as they happen. Don't wait to take advantage of these new and amazing offers available to you in 2022 at BetOnline.net. BetOnline. It's where the game starts. Make sure you give the Locked On MLB podcast, Prospects podcast, a listen after today's show. <laughs> Lindsey Crosby is a minor league encyclopedia and will keep you up to date on the up and coming players as well as cover a little bit of college baseball as well. The Locked On MLB Prospects 
podcast, boy, I cannot talk today, is free and available on all platforms. That's right, free and available on all platforms, just like Locked on Reds. Make sure you're following the Locked on Reds podcast on Twitter. You can follow me at S. Offenbaker. You can follow Jeff at Jeff Carr. That's Jeff with three Fs. And you can follow the show at Locked on Reds. Also, please make sure you are subscribed to our YouTube channel at Locked on Reds. There is going to be exclusive video content over there that will not be in the audio podcast feed. If you haven't clicked subscribe yet, you missed an episode last week on St. Patrick's Day, a special bonus episode that gave some coverage of some of the transactions uh, that occurred while we were recording our St. Patrick's Day show. So if you haven't heard that yet, head over to the YouTube channel, click that subscribe button and check us out. Jeff, with injuries already starting to occur, with the Reds continuing to massage, we'll call it, this roster, uh, we really have to start thinking about who is the next man up at certain positions. Already we've addressed shortstop and what the ace of the bullpen is going to look like, but as you alluded to in the last segment, that's also going to mean other people are going to have to adjust their roles and begin to step up. Uh, you know, One of the common thoughts was that Jose Barrero was going to play some outfield. So that means somebody else is going to have to step up out there. It means that Farmer or someone else is not going to be able to super utility the infield and someone else is going to have to step up in there. So when you look at the moves that the Reds have made recently and you look at what's on uh, or presumably on this active roster, let's start in the infield. And who do you see as the next man up, maybe into that super utility role uh, to fill that gap that's now going to be caused by Jose Barrero not being available? I definitely think... Alejo Lopez deserves that role. He deserves that spot since Kyle Farmer is now going to be remainder to shortstop. Alejo Lopez has played a little bit this spring, hasn't done anything really of note as of yet, but I firmly believe that it is his time to step up in the super utility role, at least until Jose Barrero is back. Now, it's going to be interesting because, as you mentioned, Jose Barrero has that outfield flexibility, not necessarily something that they've tried a whole lot with Alejo Lopez. So I look at this and I say, are they going to promote him or are they, or are they going to keep him on the opening day roster or are they going to hold on to a guy like Lorenzo Cedrola or somebody like that? who could play outfield, though Cedrola doesn't have any infield upside. You've got some interesting guys that they just brought in, like Donovan Solano and Colin Moran, who we kind of talked about a little bit last week, who can fill the infield spots, although I believe that Solano's going to get the playing time at third base against left-handed pitching because he mashes left-handed pitching. And you'll probably see Moose there at third, and Moran's going to be somewhere. I, I'm not exactly <laughs> sure where because he's a lefty. It's not as if we needed another lefty in this lineup, but, hey, here he is. Uh, so I look at this and I say I think it's Alejo Lopez and an outside shot at Lorenzo Cedrola. You know, I agree with you, except that I don't agree with how I think it's going to happen. Uh, I, I agree with you that uh, Saldano was going to be the platoon at third base, pre Jose Burrow's injury. But I think that with Nick Craw and David Bell both saying that Saldano was going to get reps in the outfield, I think that he's going to end up being your utility player. I think that the platoon at third base will be our man Aleo Lopez with Mike Moustakis. I think that's the platoon there. Uh, and you use Saldano to, to shift all Solano. around. He'll Salano, sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's early, Jeff, because internet... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Appreciate everybody for bearing with us and a little bit of later release today. Uh, good old Spectrum decided that it wasn't going to work last night. But yeah, uh, I I think it's interesting because Solano has definitely had playing time at shortstop. He's had playing time in second base, although the Reds don't really need any help there. Jonathan India has proven that this weekend. He has looked phenomenal. He hasn't missed a beat at all. I mean, crushed that leadoff home run on Sunday against uh, Sam, was it Sam Long? Anyway, Giants, Giants pitcher. Some guy is not going to be on the major league roster. But he still mashed that home run. So Solano's got the ability to play some short. I would still look at this and say that as soon as Jose Barrera is healthy, they are happy to see that, and he is going to get slotted in. It's just can he get healthy soon. And these are the next men up. And then when I look at the bullpen, okay, so Sess is the next man up. So then who... But let's quickly kind of roll through uh, pecking where in the bullpen. So without Lucas Sims, and obviously no TJ Antone, he's out all year. 
You've got Luis Sessa. Then who else? San- is it like Santion. Justin? I think you look at Tony Santion. And after you get past Tony mm-hmm. Santion, I really feel like you're basically pulling a name out of a hat. I think everybody else is so tightly bunched as far as a pecking order goes. It is truly just going to be uh, David Bell looks at who's available, looks at if it's a right or left-handed batter that he really wants to get out, and that's how he's going to make his decision. I don't think there's anybody else out there that has really truly established themselves as a dominant case to, to have a, a designated place in the pecking order. I think it's really going to come down to um, trial by combat, maybe, <laughs> we'll call it, <laughs> for the first couple weeks of the season, and and whoever really goes out there and, and has the hot hand is going to be the guy that Bell goes to. So you think that this would kind of preclude him from the starting rotation uh Competition. Yeah, I don't. I don't see him in the starting rotation competition. And uh, in tomorrow's episode, um, as I teased a little bit earlier, I'll be breaking down exactly what I think that rotation looks like, as well as my plan to protect the youngsters' arms in that rotation. So uh, Tony Santion is a bullpen guy in my mind. I think that what he brought to that bullpen when they made that move last year clearly demonstrates that he has a talent for coming in and maximum effort getting guys out. And I don't think he can be that same pitcher as a starting pitcher. And I think the Reds truly need him out there in that bullpen. He absolutely pitched phenomenally on Sunday. I loved what he did. And that was in a starting role, but for two innings, his slider, he was dropping it in there for strikes. He was confusing hitters and he was throwing his fastball up in the zone and getting swings and misses on that as well. He is looking like he is ready to go early on. I'm with you. I think that, I mean, we have both said this before on the podcast that for him personally, the value that he brings to the team, I think is more valuable out of the bullpen. And I know that in general arguments, when you talk about a pitcher, a starting pitcher is more valuable than a relief pitcher, but his performance out of the bullpen makes him so much more valuable as a relief pitcher, because he was awesome when he could ramp up and they're like, okay, go get us three outs. And he did that. It seemed like, you know, he was fine as a starter, but he was a lot better out of the bullpen. So I look for him too. And then, yeah, picking names out of the hat. I mean, Justin Wilson, um, yeah, that, this See, is probably... I mean, you're, you're even struggling to, to pull up names. <laughs> I think that's just how how non, you know, attention grabbing the rest of this bullpen is. And it's really just going to come down to who, someone getting hot uh, when the season starts down there in Atlanta. Yeah, because, I mean, we've got guys like Art Warren, but we haven't seen them yet. I, I need to mm-hmm. see them. And the fact that we haven't seen them in camp makes me wonder if we're waiting on a report or, you know, if maybe they're coming in today or something. I don't, I don't know. Anyway, when we're talking about next man up when it comes to injuries. I'll, say, I'll tell you one thing, though, Steve. The backup catcher opening has already been filled by Aramis <laughs> Garcia. Uh, we go three up and three down. Coming up next. But um, if you're looking for a healthy snack right now, look, we're in the middle of the tournament. What a beautiful first weekend of college basketball. If you didn't watch any college basketball this this last weekend, you were doing it wrong. That was a lot of fun. Of course, you might have been like me and watching spring training baseball as well. If you're looking for a snack to get you through some spring training games, look no further than Built Bar. Built Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. We're talking about the amazingness of chocolate and flavors like cherry barcia, coconut, peanut butter, brownie, and all kinds of wonderful stuff that also has the statistics and the healthy side-ness of 130 average calories, less than four grams of sugar and net carbs, and 17 up to 18 grams of protein in most built bars. So if you haven't tried them already, what are you waiting for? We're talking about some all-star caliber snacks with flavors, and, and the flavors like the ones that I mentioned, plus they've got limited time things that roll through Built.com all the time. You got to check them out today at built.com and use that promo code locked 15 to save 15% off your next order built bar with its amazing statistics and its amazing taste will quickly rise up through your snack power rankings. That's built bar at built.com and use that promo code locked 15 to save 15% at checkout. 
Thanks again for making Locked On Reds your first listen. Make sure you're following the podcast on all platforms, including right here on YouTube. If you're watching, thank you for that. Make sure you're subscribed. And if you're not, head on over to YouTube. Like Steve said, had a great bonus episode this last week. There's going to be a lot more bonuses as the season nears and as the season goes on. And we are starting something new. This is going to be a segment that we kind of do each and every Monday that uh, we just kind of look back at everything that happened over the weekend. And of course, there's going to be big storylines that we really talk about a lot, but there's also some other stuff that we need to get to that we might miss. So we're going to do three up, three down, and we got a minute for each subject. I'm going to start the timer right there. All right, Steve, first one, obviously the biggest one. Everybody's talking about it because... Let's be honest, it's spring training. There's not a ton to talk about when you're talking about the Cincinnati Reds. Backup catcher, baby. It's sold. It's solid. It's Armas Garcia with two homers, including a grand slam. If you had Armas Garcia as your number one home run hitter for spring training, congratulations. I want to know why, but you're right. Jeff, here's the thing. And I think Steve Mancuso summed it up best in his newsletter today. That is spring training stats do not matter. And (laughs) while it was a very fun performance to watch uh, Garcia go out there and shellac the Oakland A's, I am going to tell you that the second catcher conversation is still wide open. And I am still not sure that the second catcher is actually on the roster right now. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know what? I will take that hot take. I, I liked what he did. I think he put himself at least at the top of the depth chart in that area. Next guy we want to get to a former friend or not former. He's still on the roster, an old friend of ours who we are looking toward, hopefully bouncing back this year. And that is Nick Senzel. All right. We talked about statistics, not mattering that much. I get it. He had a couple of extra base hits. His swing looked really good. He looked healthy, which is the most important thing. He's got to be healthy, but Nick Senzel looking good over the first couple of spring training games. He looked comfortable. He was running the bases well. He was, he looked like he belonged in the batter's box. And most importantly, out in center field, he was playing a pretty effortless center field. Uh, all of those things. And, you know, it's, it's 2022. And I know people don't want to hear about the eyeball test, but Nick Senzo has passed the eyeball test. He looks healthy. He looks ready to go, which matches up with everything we're being told. And, you know, we've said it all off season. That's exactly what we need from Nick Senzo. And we need it for 150 to 160 games, uh, this coming 2020. 22 season. I agree. And I loved everything that I saw from him moving on. All right. This is the third up. We got one, two, three, one other Nick, Nick Lodolo. Are we sure Aramis Garcia's name isn't Nick? We could have had three Nicks. Anyway, Nick Lodolo looked fantastic in his first start, first game of spring training, those two innings, no hits, four strikeouts, Again, stats, spring training, blah, 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 blah. I love what he did. He kept the ball down, and the only time that he ever threw really a high fastball was just to change the eye level of the hitter. And guess who he actually threw a high fastball to and didn't see it hit out of the park? Jose Ramirez. I I marked that down in my mind. I'm like, okay, dude's not afraid to throw a high fastball against one of the best players in the league. Understood. Nick Lodolo looks like he is making an argument, I think, which – I, we're going to cover in more detail tomorrow, but making an argument for that fifth spot. You know, last year in the middle of the season, uh, Chattanooga pitching coach Rob Wooten told me that Nick Lodolo was ready for the major leagues right then, right now. And I think what we saw, you know, again, small sample size, early performance, et cetera, et cetera. But the Nick Lodolo that we saw pitch already this season is vastly different than what we saw from him when he pitched in spring games last season. He looks much more comfortable. He looks like he has much more command. He looks much like he has much more mound presence. I think that, you know, he'll probably go to AAA unless the Reds run my plan, which I'll tell you about tomorrow. But if, if he does go to AAA, he will not be there for long. Uh, Nick Lodolo will make his major league debut this season. The Reds are going to need him. And I believe he He's going to come up and be successful. All right. That's three up. Now we got to do the three down. And uh, first one kind of rolls along with our first and the three up. 
anyone else vying for the number two catcher spot? I know you mentioned that the job's wide open, but I'll say this. The eye test didn't look very good on Andrew Knapp or on Mark Colesbury. Both of them did not have very good at bats whenever they were up at the plate. Very quick at bats, weren't seeing a lot of pitches. And when they swung, they were not making very hard contact. These are guys that you you want to see. Obviously, the hitting is not going to be paramount. You want to make sure that they're good fielders. Both of them are. But I still think that I, I, I kind of agree with you. That number two catcher is either Armas Garcia or he's not on the roster. Uh, that's that's really what I think. I mean, if you look at Knapp and if if you look at what he did, he was exactly as advertised. A light hitting defense first catcher. Those days are over in Major yeah. League Baseball. The the primary catcher is not catching 150 games. Johnny Bench is not walking through that door. Uh, it's going to be a guy, Tyler Stevenson, that is not going to catch five days a week. And and hopefully now with the designated hitter, we do get to see him hit five or six days a week. But he's just not going to be back there. The second catcher is really that. It's not a backup anymore. It's the number two guy that's going to get a lot of playing time. And the Reds have to take that into account. And they have to start scouring the waiver wires and looking at what every other camp is doing and snatch somebody up as soon as they become available. Basically, what we're saying is Kirk Casale. You up? It's All right, exactly. coming up. We, we talked about Nick Senzel. Who's down? Everyone else in the outfield. Now, I will say, <clears throat> Aristides Aquino looked pretty good. He had a really nice home run, absolutely destroyed that pitch in the center field. And I, I think that that is something that we can all build hope upon. However, in the large scheme of things, the rest of the outfield just was not doing a whole lot for me. Yeah, if Aristides Aquino plays a lot, uh, the season is not really going to go very far. Um, oh. This is this is an area probably more importantly than the backup catcher position is the Reds have to go get somebody. And if it is true, if there's any truth at all to the Reds checking in on Nick Castellanos before he signed with the Phillies, that means that there has to be a little bit of money laying around somewhere. So someone needs to go search Bob's couch cushions and pull that money out and go sign a major league ready outfielder that bats right-handed and crushes lefties. It has to happen. It has to happen today. Do not wait. Do not wait to pass go. Make the phone calls. Get somebody signed. Should we start a GoFundMe? We should probably no. We maybe should, we, should, no. we should maybe I don't know. <laughs> so they need some help. And in true form, since this is spring training and this is the first time that we're doing this, I forgot to write a number three for three down. So me, Jeff, is number three down because I. Well, you know, you know, Jeff, this is to be expected when one is making as many radio appearances as you're making here lately. <laughs> you know, there's not a lot of time to 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 work on the rundown, and I understand. So if you'd like to hear the rest of Jeff's thoughts check out every podcast <laughs> on the iheart radio app but he will be on it <laughs> i tell you what i will say there's an honorable <laughs> mention that i that i had in here I, why did i remember an honorable mention and not the third down anyway uh, honorable mention for oh was the dude who caught aristides aquino or tried to catch Aristides Aquino's home run. If you watch that video, if you were like me and you got the chance to DVR the game, go back and see that home run. Because <laughs> there's a dude. He's efforting. He's like, I got this. And like three people converge. And he's like, I'm going to jump. And then he realized the ball's like in his chest. So he like reaches down. He like kick, kicks his heat up. He's like, woo. And then he falls back. And he doesn't catch the ball. And it goes to a dad who gives it to his kid and things like that. And he's just over there on the side like, ugh. Boy, I wish I could play highlight video of that copyright stuff. Can't do that. But go back and watch that. That was it's that was probably a, a baseball version of a. Come on, man. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm sure that's a trademark, but we'll still say, "Come on, man." And, and if come I was on. trying to catch it, that's probably what it would look like. <laughs> um, well, I tell you what, I think that's uh, that's a great place to wrap it up there, Steve. <laughs> oh, oh, the internet will work tomorrow. I promise. Yes, it will. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening to today's Lockdown Reds. Coming up tomorrow, like we said, we're going to talk about that starting rotation, what the plan should be. Steve's going to be with me for a little bit, but he's traveling, so you know he might be in and out. We'll see. Uh, he's the world traveler on the podcast here. But we want to thank you again for making Lockdown Reds your first listen of the day. Make sure that you are following us on all platforms. Now, go check out Lockdown MLB and make that your second listen as Paul Francis Sullivan, please call him Sully, has a encyclopedic knowledge of baseball and will bring it to you in a very unique way. 
both present and past. That's Locked On MLB, just like Locked On Reds, free and available on all platforms. Steve, we're in spring training. Opening day is not that far away. And what can everyone expect from you and me? You can expect me and Jeff to be Locked On Reds every single day. We'll see you tomorrow.